If any of you watercolor fans follow Andre Penobach on Instagram, you know he is the absolute master of expressive cat paintings. When I first saw his work, I was totally blown away by his utter control over edges. Here are just a few examples of his seemingly effortless fluffy kitty cats. I mean, how does he do that? It's amazing. For those of you who are wondering how in the world this is done, let me tell you, those perfect fluffy tails are achieved by using the wet and wet technique. This is where you apply wet paint onto already wet paper. It's a notoriously difficult technique to control, and I think that's what makes his paintings even more impressive. But don't be afraid of wet and wet. In today's video, I wanna give you the rundown on how to paint those soft wet and wet edges, and inspired by Mr. Penovac, we'll use a cat's fluffy tail as an example. There are quite a few common problems that can occur when you're attempting to paint in this style. So I'll also give you a few examples of what not to do. But before we get into it, my YouTube analytics are telling me that 62% of you watching this right now are not subscribed so please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications that way you won't miss any of my brand new videos and it also really helps out the channel and allows me to continue bringing you free watercolor videos like this one all right so in today's demonstrations I'll be using Daniel Smith moon glow because it's a super fun color and when you use it with lots of water there are all these amazing split pigment effects that can happen you'll see for my first example I'm gonna show you the best practice for painting a controlled but super fluffy cat's tail. There are four important factors that will actually dictate how well this technique works for you. So let's talk about those really quick. Number one, the kind of paper you're using really matters. I recommend using cotton watercolor paper. Wet and wet techniques just tend to work better on cotton watercolor paper rather than wood pulp based papers. The paint spreads more evenly and you'll just have more control over the flow of the paint and the water. Also, you'll want to use a toothier paper like cold pressed or rough pressed. It's just got a little more texture. I would avoid hot press papers for this technique because they tend to dry more quickly and you'll see a less dramatic spreading effect with your paint on the surface of hot press paper just because it's so smooth. The second factor that's really going to matter is the wetness level of your paper, which we will discuss in the following examples. And the third factor is the wetness level of your paintbrush. Again, I'll show you what that means in just a minute. And then the fourth factor is, this is the most critical one, practice. There's simply no substitute for logging your brush miles, putting in the time, and just practicing these techniques over and over. The more you do it, the easier it will get. I want you to be okay with mucking up your nice cotton paper, spending some time on exercises like these. Be okay with failed paintings. It's all right. Eventually, it will lead to success, and at the very least, you'll be much more comfortable and familiar with these techniques. Just play, have fun. All right, so for this demo, I'm using Winsor Newton 140-pound cotton cold-pressed watercolor paper. We've got good Good paper check now remember we need to have the correct level of wetness on the paper to achieve this effect that's factor number two so I'm taking a clean brush with clean water and spreading it evenly onto the surface of the paper the wetness of the paper it needs to be glossy or shiny but with no pooling or puddling that's really important and you want to extend the water quite a bit beyond where your paint is going to go this ensures that the paint will have room to stretch its legs to extend and then reach a stopping point within that still wet area. Next, I mix up a generous amount of paint with enough dabs of water just to get the paint flowing. You can see I spend quite a bit of time working the paint and making sure it's the correct consistency. My brush is totally loaded up with creamy paint. There's no extra water in the brush. That's so important. So the wetness level of the brush is just damp, definitely no drips. Factor number three, check. All right, so apply some pressure to your brush so that the bristles flatten a bit and you're using the belly part of the brush to release the paint. Draw with your paint a tail shape onto that shiny wet paper. Resist the temptation to mess with it. You can do two side-by-side -side brush strokes if you want to widen the tail a little, but don't touch those edges. Just allow the paint to spread naturally outward into the wet paper. I guarantee any extra brushing you do is gonna mess it up, so don't touch it. <laughs> Now, if you've tried this technique and it's looking nothing like this example, that's okay. So here are some common mistakes that can result in less than satisfactory results. Mistake number one, your brush is too wet. If your painting looks like this, it's most likely because your brush had some extra water in it. When a very wet brush releases paint onto already wet paper, this excess of water causes an overextension of that fuzzy effect. 
too much water always means lack of control. I don't think this one looks bad necessarily. I actually kind of like it. <laughs> it could work really well for a squirrel's tail or something that's just a little foofier even than a cat. Now mistake number two, your paper and your brush are too wet. If your painting looks like this, there was probably excess pooling or puddling of water on your paper. In this example, instead of lifting out that extra wetness with my brush, which just would have taken a couple of swipes of my brush, I just let it be. I didn't let it dry at all. I went right in with my very wet loaded paintbrush and behold, an explosion. Mistake number three, your paper is too dry. If your paintings consistently have hard edges like this and you're just having trouble getting that soft effect, you're most likely not letting the water soak into your paper all the way or you're letting it dry too soon and the paper's just not wet enough. In this example, I just grazed the surface of the paper with my damp brush. It had a satin sheen to it, but then I allowed too much time to pass before painting. Sometimes when you're spending a ton of time mixing up your color, that's all the time it takes for your paper to dry. My paper turned to a matte level of wetness, and when I painted the cattail, the paint pretty much just stayed put with very little bleeding. You can see there's a tiny bit of spreading since the paper was partially damp, but it's just not the fuzzy look I was going for. Now put a pin in this though, cause this technique of painting with wet paint on slightly damp paper can actually be really useful if you're going for an edge that's more tight and controlled, but still slightly softened. Mistake number four, no soft edge, even though the paint and brush wetness levels are correct. If your painting looks like this, you did not extend your clean water far enough away from where you intended to paint. Remember, wherever the paper is wet, the paint will flow. So here I painted the tail with water, but I really didn't allow much extra space for the paint to move. I gave it a very tiny margin. So naturally, as the paint started to dry, it spread all the way to the edge of that wet paper and stopped there, creating a hard edge instead of a soft one. In this case, it didn't even matter that my paper wetness and my brush wetness levels were correct. I just didn't give the paint enough room to spread. Now the last common mistake I wanna point out is using dirty water to wet the paper. If you use a brush that's even a little bit dirty or you're using your tinted water, it's gonna form a noticeable tinted hard line where the water stopped. This mistake is so easy to avoid. Just use a totally clean brush and fresh water. I'm giving you all of these examples because trust me, I have made every single one of these mistakes multiple times. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you want to learn more about painting pets in watercolor, download my free pet colors ebook guide in the description below. It's a 22 page PDF that will help you choose the perfect colors and plan your composition for any pet portrait. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.